Council? May it please the court. Council, you have to speak up a little, please. May it please the court. My name is Bruce Jacobs, and I'm here on behalf of the appellant, Delsa Bernardo. Would you like to reserve some time for rebuttal? Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to reserve uh, three minutes. Okay. Your Honor, O.J. Simpson moved to Florida because he heard that this state had a long history of protecting Council, creditors. just argue the merits of the case, please. Well, Your Honor, I think it's Council, important. just argue the merits of the case, please. Certainly, Your Honor. We don't have to know about the mortgage foreclosure crisis. Just talk about the merits of this particular case, please. I think the merits of the case start with the law is the law is the law. And in here, you're dealing with a summary judgment motion. On, as to uh, the appellant who has been in default since November of 2008. Well, Your Honor. Correct? My client has. Correct? Been, that's correct, Your Honor. Absolutely. My client has faced a huge deficiency judgment since December of 2008. But you don't pay your mortgage? You get foreclosed? You get a deficiency judgment? Your Honor, that's fine. I agree with that. That's, that's exactly how the law is supposed to be. But the question is, is there any difference between a criminal case and a, and a foreclosure case? No, the, the, the whole issue in this appeal is whether the, the bank negated two of your affirmative defenses, the notice requirement and whether the endorsement was authentic. Correct? Those are the two arguments that you have here before us. Certainly, although we do have a whole new argument that just came up yesterday. Well, that's not going to cut it. <laughs> it's going to only be what was raised in the briefs. Certainly, are. Then the question of what was, what happened, when my client was originally represented below, their lawyers filed an answer in affirmative defenses. The answer okay, in the, affirmative let's, defenses. Okay, let's deal with the two. Certainly. The two that you have here on appeal. The first one is the notice requirement. You submitted, your client submitted an affidavit to dispute. There were two affidavits, both saying we never got it. Which well, no, that's not what they say. Not quite. She says, I don't remember getting the notice. Isn't that insufficient as a matter of law to create a material issue in dispute? I think the question is whether or not there is a material issue that, uh, that they've established that they sent it. If you look at their affidavit. Well, no, it's presumption, a presumption that when you send it to the address and when you do all of these things and your response was, we didn't get it. We yeah. never got it. And, and the affidavit says, I don't it. recall ever receiving. But your honor, paragraph recall. 22 requires them to send the notice. And if you look at the notice that was sent, it was sent from National Mortgage Company. National, uh, National City Mortgage sent the notice in 2008. A it's year not matter before. who sent it. The issue is whether your client got it. No, no. The issue, Your Honor, is whether or not they have an affidavit that shows proof that National City Mortgage sent that notice. And if you look closely at their affidavit, it doesn't I mean, say if that. They, if they, if it was sent by somebody else to say, pay this mortgage, and he says he doesn't remember getting it, it no. matters who sent it? Respectfully, Your Honor, my, my position is if you look at their is, is, is that your position? No, Your Honor. My position is if you say in your, in your affidavit, PNC, an, a PNC employee sent this letter on PNC letterhead, and it was sent in the regular practice of PNC's business, and it was all done by PNC, and you look at the letter, and you see the letter was sent a year before the merger with PNC. Well, what difference does that make? Your Honor, if there is a factual, if, if I'm... What difference if, does it make as a matter of law? As a matter of law, you have an insufficient a affidavit. You say that. What difference does it make that it was sent by the pre-merger or the post-merger entity? I'm just looking at the affidavit, well, Your just, Honor. I'm asking you as a matter of law, sir. As a, I believe as a matter of law, it depends on what they say in their affidavit, period. Which and is if the they, mortgage hasn't been paid. You owe the money. That is not, the, if that was the answer, if we all we said was, hey, he did it, we wouldn't have well, a lot the of The very, answer is it was not paid, correct? The answer, certainly it wasn't paid. But, Your Honors, the question is whether they followed the law. We understand that, sir. The answer was, wasn't that, I don't know, I didn't recognize this loan because it had a different name on it or a different entity. The answer was, or the affidavit from your client was, I don't remember if I received it. Not that I didn't recognize it because it came from some other entity. You know, the issue below is whether or not what you case? can have a letter. What? This is on this case. The PNC says. What case do you have, sir, huh? in the past, which says since it was not sent by the same entity which was 
it was alleged to have been sent by, you don't win. Yeah. I'm looking at the, the basic, I, I'm there's asking no case what, in Florida what, that has dealt with prior, this issue. What prior case do you have which says anything like that? There's no case in Florida Thank that you. says that if you give an affidavit which says I sent something clearly Is there I any case that says on the merits, on summary judgment, on affidavits, on anything that it makes any difference who sent the letter? Actually what the affidavit says is the default and acceleration notice was sent Bye. to the borrower via mortgage servicing package, online letter writer on December 19th, 2008. Yes. What is false about that statement? Your Honor, what the witness says is, I reviewed the PNC records, period. What is false about that statement? Because you're saying you're know. relying I, on the that, affidavit. You know, what, I don't know if there's anything false about that. What I know is that their affidavit goes on to say that it was PNC Bank and PNC but employees counsel, the, the and the bottom PNC line letterhead. is, is it, it doesn't matter. When, when you get to the, motion, the summary judgment, when you actually get to the summary judgment hearing, and whichever subsequent bank, and you know, these banks are being merged and they're failing and they're coming out to be a new bank, whatever bank it is that actually is holding those precious original documents, like the original promissory note and the original mortgage, and they surrender that, all of that, all of that fancy dance about how you got from one person to the next person, those are, you know, documents that are governed by law. That's as to who along the line, it doesn't matter anymore. But your defense here was, I didn't get a notice. No, Your Honor, that's not my defense. My defense well, is. Well, your affidavit, that's all your affidavit, affidavit says. It's their affidavit. They have the burden first to disprove my affidavits before I you say don't, anything. You, you and just, what, what I'm seeing here, Your Honor, is okay, that I, their in, affidavit. In, in my opinion, sir. This is a 57105 case. Right, this is the second time that Your Honor has threatened a foreclosure defense lawyer with 57105 sanctions for raising an argument that I believe in good faith. If the affidavit says that there's no, that, that all this was done by PNC and PNC was not involved at the time, I think that's a perfectly appropriate argument to make. Well, I think that if Your Honor is so deeply pained by having to rule in favor of a homeowner and feels that it is so distasteful to do that, as Your Honor said well, in Spencer. What you, are now, what you are now saying is more than 57105. It is contemptuous. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to protect my client's interest. What is happening in counsel, foreclosure defense. Counsel, counsel, you're governed by the, by the rules of the Florida, Florida Your Honor, Supreme I'm, Court about counsel. And as you know, this court is capable on its own, sua sponte, of issuing a 57105. And we are in a position of demanding that you not act in a manner that's inappropriate, and we can enforce that. You're here to argue the merits of your client's case. You need to stick to that. So then let's look at, at, at the standing issue, because there's nothing in their affidavit at all about standing. Their affidavit says, this is, it starts off saying we affirm the we, we say the complaint is true and correct which I assume is the, the second amended complaint they're traveling under that says this note is actually owned by a securitized trust. The only reason why we know that is because Florida rule, Supreme Court, when they promulgated the 110B amendment to the rules of procedure, to specifically make sure mortgage bankers do not file frivolous cases in Florida, they said you have to swear to that. And we smoked out the true owner, the real party in interest in this case, by that second amended complaint. And what happened is they went forward as if this was always National City's mortgage. If you look at their affidavit, they say this, we agree that we state that the complaint is true. National City's mortgage is, or note is attached to the complaint. That's the only evidence you have of standing before this court. It doesn't address it anywhere. And for National City, for, that, for a PNC to claim that they have standing because they took over from National City Mortgage, and this was National City's note, which is in direct contradiction with their own verified complaint which says the note was held by a securitized trust. You, there's a, an obvious question of fact there. And for them to come yesterday and amend their, uh, and to say we, we strike that whole argument, and now we believe that there is a, uh, you know, that, that, that we could still move forward and say this court shouldn't, shouldn't send this back down, even for a determination as to that. Who owns the note? That standing was raised in the firm defense, and their position in their sworn was pleadings. Was the original note? surrendered at the time of the motion for summary no, judgment? The original was, was certainly tendered. And was the original mortgage tendered at the time of the motion for summary judgment? That's my understanding. And then the question becomes, when did they get it? When did, did they, is the note canceled? 
I, I don't know if the note's canceled. I haven't seen that. But what I do know is the question is not whether they can come to court with an original note with an undated blank endorsement. The question is whether they had that original note with an, unblade, with an undated blank endorsement on the day that they filed. And if they are not representing them, if, if they are representing another interest, if they are actually a servicer for a securitized trust, where is the evidence of that? They have basically tried to get this case through. Your as client has been paying the mortgage to some other entity throughout this proceeding. Is right. there any such claim that your client has been paying this absolutely mortgage? Absolutely not, Your Honor. The, to, any, to any entity? You know, absolutely not. My client faces an extreme deficiency judgment and can't settle this case without that getting waived. That's our problem here. Because there are armies Counsel, of debt collectors. That's, that's not a, that's nothing really, to do with the merits. Well, neither is whether or not they Nothing to do with the correctness of the judgment. Respectfully, neither is whether or not they've paid. The merits of this case is, did we go on summary judgment? Did they overrule? Did they disprove all of our affirmative defenses? Well, counsel, you raised the issue of standing and the wrong party and the wrong person having the note and when it was transferred. And it has to be material to something. So obviously, if your client has been paying the wrong party or paying somebody along the line that hasn't been getting credit, that's, that's a big issue. But that's not a, you just said, that's not true. So no. I no, there's been no payment made to any, no matter who had it along the line, your clients have not been paying. As a former prosecutor, I knew most of my clients, most of the people I was after did it. Counsel, it that, that, the answer to my question is what you, you said, your client wasn't paying, correct? My client's not paid the mortgage, okay. yes, but does that mean that we throw to out anyone. the rule of law? To anyone. To anyone, absolutely. But what, does that mean we throw out the rule of law? Does that mean I can walk counsel, into summary judgment? Counsel, your time is, is up. Certainly. Thank you very much. May it please the court, Stephen Marr from Schutz and Bowen for PNC. Let's start with standing. They raised standing for the first time in their reply brief. As Judge Rothenberg noted, there were only two issues in this case. Standing was added lately. Uh, they rely on a case, a 2013 case, that says you have to have proof you had the blank endorsement in your possession at the time you file. Um, actually, that was never raised in the answer in the reply brief, but if you look at page 45 of the record, it will show that we did have possession of it. There was a bill letter there showing we had it. But that's neither here nor there because it wasn't raised in the answer, it wasn't raised in the initial brief, and it's been waived. Uh, in, in answer to your question, Judge Schwartz, they relied on the Glarum case in the, in, in the trial court. Glarum involves two different banks that were not at all associated. They had a, they had a witness from one bank who went and said, I don't really know how the other bank kept their records. And they said, that's not adequate for summary judgment. That's not this case. This case is National City Mortgage was acquired by was PNC. This was a successor by, th this was a, a successor merger. by merger. And what happened was this default occurred when it was National City Mortgage. And he's complaining because the woman that testified said, PNC's records show this letter was sent. And they let it, the letter says National City Mortgage. So what's wrong with that? National City Mortgage's records are now PNC's records. That's how it works in a merger. There's no question there was a merger. The merger documents are in this record. And, and therefore, this is a complete red herring to, to look at Glarum. In fact, we relied on the Weissenberg case. And the Weissenberg case is much closer than, than Glarum because it says Glarum's facts were the person didn't know what was going on. We have a person who was an officer in National two, City Mortgage. And we're really, I think, getting so far afield because the only two issues that were raised was whether notice was sent. And, I mean, whether, actually, whether well, there was, whether the bank uh, complied with the notice requirement and secondarily whether the endorsement on the note was authentic. Right. So and, the and notice the, issue was there was an affidavit by the bank showing that notice was sent and, and the and only I affidavit out, in... I, I want to just it, point out that this, this, the woman who gave this affidavit was an officer in the, and, a, and, a, and a, 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 the person involved in National City Mortgage. And both she entities. She then was an officer in Correct. PNC. This is buttoned up two ways on, on the notice issue. And the only affidavit to refute that said, I just don't remember, I don't remember. whether I exactly got it. Exactly right. And the second one said, I reviewed my <coughs> client's documents and it doesn't show that. Well, Neither the question was receipt. Wasn't Pardon. the question receipt? Of the, of the uh, th that's what they dealt with, although I, I, giving them the benefit of the doubt, their brief did talk about a broader question. It talked about uh, negating the affirmative defense. So even if they were looking at the larger question on paragraph 22, the answer is good notice was sent. It was proved 
through a, a proper representative, and they say, well, they weren't a records custodian. And then as, as to the, the statute the, says, or a qualified person. As to the endorsement, there was no dispute that it was her signature on the mortgage. She did not dispute that. No, and what happened was, note. Th this is important to get a little detail on. What happened was, they went in and they said, generally, we dispute the signatures. It, it was a very, upon information and belief, it had, if you look at the statute, and it's 673.3081, what the statute is, it's part of the Uniform Commercial Code, because this is a, a, a negotiable instrument, you need to specifically to challenge a signature. I challenge so-and-so's authority because, that's what the legislature has said, because Uni Uniform Commercial Code has requirements. And what they say in the, in this, in the com official comments to that section is, we're not going to allow people to just say, prove it up. Because there's no reason to, p to put these people in the position they have to be witnesses in court. On every case, somebody just says, prove it up. Because in a case like this, and the legislature made this, this very, very clear, there's, there's no problem with these signatures. There's no problem with these endorsements. It's very rare there's a forgery. It's very rare there's a problem with authority. Well, and, the and UCC is to move things along. And, and the UCC it's requires... Uniform commercial code. We're talking about commerce. Right, and, and so that, that's, that's why they do this. So if you look at this, when, and, and, and I want to I just very, very briefly for you, give you, this is what they said in their initial brief. Appley failed to produce any admissible evidence to establish the validity of the signatures on the loan as required by Florida Statute 673-3081. Appellant's aid of defense denied the validity of the endorsement of Tara Schaefer as a document control specialist both for NCM and NCMC. Not true. All the affirmative defense said was, on information and belief, defendant asserts uh, and alleges all of the facts from the previous affirmative defenses have simply raised the negative environment, the lack of authentic authenticity or validity of the signatures or endorsements. That is not a challenge to any specific person, and it's, as a matter of law, insufficient under this statute. So we don't need to go beyond that and say what was done. And there's really, when, when, we, when we did discovery in this case, we read this very general uh, affirmative defense is saying, I didn't sign the note. And we, we, quis we questioned her in deposition. Did you sign the note? She said, absolutely, I did. So we thought it was all done. We go to summary judgment. Nothing happens. Then all of a sudden, an appeal. Oh, Tara Schaefer. So what, what, when does that come up? You, you know, this is, this is uh, an attack by ambush. They don't tell you what's going on. And all of a sudden, oh, standing in the reply brief. And, you know, it's just not fair to us. I could have taken that bailment letter, I could have put it under an affidavit and submitted it had, had standing ever been raised. If you look at, the, at, at, at their affirmative defense number seven, which is their standing, their standing affirmative defense, which was never raised at all in the initial brief, it has three bases for lack of standing, and this isn't one of them. So all we're saying is we did this properly, and we would very much appreciate it if this court would affirm the judgment below. Thank you, counsel. Counsel, you went over time, but would you give you one minute? The answer from a defense is contested the validity of the contested the validity of the endorsements. When you look at the endorsement, there's one person who signs as a document control specialist for two different parties. That in and of itself is enough under the for, under the Uniform Commercial Code to raise it as an issue which they don't address by any sworn evidence. Is there any indication at all that this person's signature was not authentic or not the signature of the person that no, the person it, didn't have didn't have the authority to sign i mean i mean you can throw out a lot of wild allegations out there but is there any suggestion at all that that's i think if, if we're dealing with an executive vice president or a president of the entity that was it was clearly authorized to transfer by florida law the the asset of a corporation sure no problem but you have a document control specialist from two different companies you have issues, Your Honor, that were raised below that were just not addressed in the affidavit. And my whole point, Your Honor, is if you look closely at this affidavit, it was a cut and paste job for a high volume practice that talked about pleadings and documents that were obviously not sent by the right people. And if that's the case, it's an easy fix. They could have just filed a new affidavit to clarify that it was National City Mortgage that sent. But they did have the note and it was belonged to a, to a securitized trust and they did have the authority of that trust to act. And none of that happened here. But, and the, but the problem in the end always happens to be that the, that the entity that the original documents are surrendered by the entity 
by, I mean, you, it, it's like you have to ask what's material. You, you, know, you, you have, have to ask, ask what is, uh, my respectable position is the law is the law and it must be followed. And if you're on summary judgment, you have to, it's your burden to, every inference well, goes in my no favor. It's no issue of genuine material fact, if you read the rule. It says, <laughs> no genuine issue of material fact. And if the validity of the signature of a document control specialist, which is not recognized in Florida as someone authorized to transfer an asset of a corporation, if uh, that's an inference that should be drawn in my favor, that says you have to deal with that issue because they raised the validity of it, you have to address whether or not a document control specialist has any authority. And that was raised below on the motion for rehearing. It was all laid out. There and is in no conclusion, surprise. you would like for us to? You know, in the conclusion, I think you cannot leave a summary judgment standing when the plaintiff is here saying we Counsel, sued. in conclusion, you would like for I us to? I would ask to? for the court to reverse the summary judgment. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you both.